Today we will take a look at Kitana, an open source web application crawler created by Project Discovery. In this tutorial we will show you how to use Kitana, allowing you to unveil hidden assets, identify vulnerabilities and safeguard your web applications from the ever lurking threats of a digital world. A web crawler is a tool that can automatically click all links and submit forms in your web application. The URLs of those pages are then processed and stored. A web crawler is mainly used to generate a sitemap of a web application. Since Katana is written in Go, we can use the Go functionality to install it. To install it, we run the Go install command. Once installed, you'll be ready to define a target URL and any additional parameters that align with your scanning objectives. The simplest way of running Katana is to add a URL using the U flag. We can set multiple URLs to Katana through separating them with commas. There are, however, multiple other ways to start Katana. For example, we can use the standard in to pipe input into Katana. This makes it easy to pipe results of other tools to Katana, such as Nuclei. If you want us to make a follow-up video showing us how to chain project discovery tools together, please subscribe and leave a like. Katana has two different ways of crawling. It can use a standard mode. This mode uses the Go HTTP library to handle HTTP requests and responses. This mode is the fastest mode. The downside of this mode is that it's not able to parse JavaScript or DOM rendered endpoints. For this, we have the headless mode. In headless mode, Katana hooks directly into the Chrome browser to run the scan headless. This means that JavaScript and DOM rendered endpoints are crawled. If your web application uses browser fingerprinting, the agent identifies itself as a full browser, thus it will have less issues with parsing pages. To enable headless mode, we can use the headless flag. To control the limits what Katana is allowed to scan, we need to set a scope. When a scope is not set, there is a large chance that Katana will run forever. Katana has many methods of setting a scope. The ones that are the most useful we will discuss in this video, but the Git contains many more ways of limiting the scope. The most common way of setting a scope is by limiting Katana to a single domain or subdomain. This can be done using the field scope or FS flag. Together with this flag, we have to use one of the following three options. RDN, crawling is limited to the root domain and all subdomains. FQDN, crawling is scoped to a specific domain or subdomain. DN, crawling is limited to the domain keyword. When this is not sufficient, we can use a crawl scope or CS flag. This is similar to the field scope flag, but the parameter can be set manually and it supports regex. We can also set particular items to be out of scope using the crawl out of scope or COS flag. Using this flag, we can easily select directories, files or subdomains to be out of scope. If we need to pass multiple scope items, we can create a file that contains the domains or strings that we want to add or remove from the scope. This function works for all the flags of scope selection. If you have any questions about scope selection or our content, please leave a comment below. We will try to answer your questions as soon as possible. Kitana allows us to configure the crawler to crawl exactly what we need. We can set a crawl depth using the depth or D flag followed by an integer. This limits the depth of the crawl to a certain depth of directories. We can use the JS crawl or JC flag to parse JavaScript files for endpoints. Ensure to have your scope configured correctly before using this flag. This has a chance of generating a large number of false positives. With the crawl duration or CT flag followed by an integer, we can limit the amount of time that Katana is allowed to crawl. The integer is an amount in minutes. This might be handy to enable when a large set of domains need to be crawled. If the web application requires authentication, we can set custom headers using the headers or age flag. This allows us to access protected resources. Katana supports adding headers directly in the command line or from a file that can be used. If we use a file, each line in the file needs to contain a header. If you liked what you heard so far, please leave a like. This lets us know that you like this kind of content.
It is quite common that during large crawls your web application becomes unresponsive due to a large amount of requests that are sent. To prevent this issue from occurring, we can use the rate limiting functions of Katana. The easiest way is with the rate limit flag followed by a number of requests per second. This is the flag that is most commonly used. There are many other options and flags listed on the Katana Git page. By default, Katana outputs the crawled endpoints to the terminal. If we want to store the result, we can use the output flag. By using the flag followed by a name, we can store the output as a plain text file. We can also store the output as a JSON file. This is done with the JSONL flag. This flag changes the output to JSON output. Using the flags we have learned, we can now run Katana on our domain without going out of scope. As we conclude this look at Katana, we encourage you to explore its GitHub page and read its documentation. This video has merely scratched the surface of what is possible with Katana. With it in your arsenal, you will be equipped to safeguard your web applications, defend against emerging threats and maintain the integrity of your digital infrastructure. We hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please press the like, comment or subscribe button. It would really help us in the algorithm. Thank you for watching.